Hello out there to you. In this video, we're going to do an AP microeconomics practice question, or it could be from a college level uh, course, but uh, it, it deals with some price controls from the government and how that affects the market. So uh, we've got a market for avocados. Uh, we want to help them somehow. So we're going to raise the price. So the equilibrium price you want to recognize, that's right in the middle where supply meets demand. It's 20. Uh, it says, will the government use a binding price floor at 25 or 15? Okay, so a, a price floor of 15 is below the equilibrium price, so it won't do anything. Uh, the price is actually higher. So this would be like if uh, the government were to say gas can't be any lower than 25 cents. That wouldn't really do anything. Okay, so we have to do a price floor of uh, $25. So you're going to draw a line right here on your graph and it is so so now now we have uh raised raised the price so we would just say that the the price floor needs to be set above equilibrium which is 20. okay uh, next what must the government do to ensure that the policy raises their income so what we want to recognize is what what's sometimes called the quantity exchanged so if this is the price floor then we follow it out where it hits the demand curve. At this higher price, the consumers don't want to buy as many. So that's 15. Uh, and then the sellers, though, want to sell more avocados at a higher price. So we end up with this surplus of 10 units. So the government would have to guarantee that they were going to purchase it. Um, so you would want to say that if this was this problem. But you, you will sometimes see this kind of problem and it'll say, uh, like if the government promises to buy all the excess uh, supply or the, the surplus there, how much would they have to pay? Well, it would be 10 and then they would have to pay 25 each. So it would, be, it would cost them 250 in, in, in dozens of units uh, if they wanted to, to, to do that policy. OK, um, but it's. So you just need to say that you didn't need to work out the math, but that's how to do that. Calculate the following after the imposition of a price floor. Show your work. OK, consumer surplus. So that's going to be the area below the demand curve, but above the, the price. So we're going to draw that in pink here. It stops right here. So this triangle here is the consumer surplus. And then the producer surplus is the area above the supply curve, but below the price. And that price is higher. So our producer surplus is a little bit different. It's going to go to there. And then our deadweight loss, use orange right here. That's our deadweight loss. So I'll start labeling things. So this is consumer surplus. This big thing is producer surplus. And this right here, that's our dead weight loss. So we can start calculating things. Sometimes the question though isn't just calculate the whole thing, but it's like what's the difference? So if if you had that, what you'd want to do is calculate the producer surplus before and then compare it to the producer surplus after. Uh, you could do the consumer surplus before and the consumer surplus after. That's that's the quick way to do that. Okay. So consumer surplus, this is just a triangle. Uh, we'll say one half base times height and uh, we get a, a height here of 15 base of 15 15 times 15 I don't know 15 times 15 and then half of that so that would be uh, 112 50 this is measured in money so that's the new consumer surplus the deadweight loss is another easy triangle so we'll do that one going to be one half uh, here. It's only five units. And we're going to multiply that by 10, $10. That one I can do in my head. That's $25. Okay, the producer surplus, probably easiest to break it into two. So first thing, we've got this triangle. And that triangle is 0 to 15, 0 to 15. We actually already did that. That's 112. 50, but then we want to add that to this rectangle. And this rectangle is 15 times 10, uh, 10 being here and 15 being here. So 15 times 10 is 150. So the 
Uh, the total there would be 162.50. That's the new producer surplus. All right. So then finally, using the labeling on the graph, identify a price ceiling or quantity quota that'll generate the same amount of dead weight loss. Well, we kind of already have that answer. It seems like an easy ish question here. Um, we just want the uh, quantity loss to be five here, right? So you got a couple options. You could say, what about a price ceiling of 15? Because that would increase the consumer surplus, decrease the producer surplus, and leave us with this dead weight loss. Or we could have a quota of just 15 units. So sometimes that's a question uh, as well. And if you have a quota of that, now the quota is going to get generate a little bit different answer. Quota would, um, because the price would then be higher, the price would be 15. So they could have cut that off. Now you have to have a lot of information there, but quota 15 or price ceiling, oh, of also 15. 15 seems to be the magic number on this video. See you next time.